All right, so this is the first video in the series for the core curriculum, module six, introduction to basic rigging. Starts off the module with a bunch of trade terms, which you'll be filling out on different parts of this web campus work. And then on page two, rigging is the planned movement of material and equipment from one location to another using slings, hoists, or other types of equipment. That's the basic definition of what we're doing with a rigging operation. So talks about there using a crane to lift stuff, which is the most common way, but it also mentioned some, some places you use a loader. When I worked for Ames Construction, we didn't have a crane on site, so we used loader to lift heavy things around. We had some mobile cranes on the back of a service truck and things like that that had a one ton capacity and had a very limited range that it could lift. But for the most part, when we moved anything heavy, it was with a loader. Then it goes to talk about how rigging operations can be extremely dangerous, and they are very dangerous. I don't want to understate that. When people make mistakes rigging and lifting stuff, people get hurt and killed. So it is a very serious, very important part of what we will do as millwrights going forward. So just keep that in mind and why everything has to be checked each and every time you use it. So section 1.1 gets into slings and during a rigging operation the load being lifted or moved must be connected to the apparatus such as a crane that will provide the power for movement. The connector or the link between the load and the apparatus is often a sling made of either synthetic chain or wire rope materials. So we're going to concentrate on this section of the video on synthetic slings. Synthetic slings and what I'm going to grab first is just a regular synthetic sling out here. The first check we have to do is we have to inspect and make sure the tagging requirements are there. It gives some bullet points there on page three about what should all be on the tag. But basically the first important thing is the load rating. Here's for the choker, here's for the vertical, here's for the basket. That rated capacity is the main thing we have to have on the sling. Without that, we do not know what it could lift. We have a good idea what it could lift, but what if something goes wrong? Who is responsible then for using that sling? So without this tag, this is useless. If we go back to module one in the core when we talked about the ladder, without the rated capacity on it, we don't know what we can take up on the ladder. Same thing with the sling. We don't know how much we can lift without that on there. Rated capacity is also known as WLL, working load limit. Same thing. What is the maximum weight this will hold? What is the working load limit or the amount that this will hold? So uh, other things on there, again, look at those bullet points, manufacturer's name or trademark, the code or stock number, which is unique for each sling. Again, the rated capacity and then the type of synthetic material that's used to build this sling. So then we're going to go ahead to on page four and talk about the advantages of synthetic slings. Well, for one thing, they're softer and wider than chain or wire rope. They're thicker, they're heavier this way, is what they're talking about there. They do not rust or corrode and therefore will not stain the loads they are lifting. Obviously, they're made out of synthetic material. They will not rust, but you do have to pay attention and look for UV damage. You see the difference in color between the inside of the eyes and the outside. Some of that is dirt, but some of that could be UV damage also. So it doesn't mention that in this part of it. It will mention it in the sling inspection later. They're lightweight, making them easier to handle than wire rope or chain slings. Sure, that's the major advantage of them. You can move these around 20-foot lengths easy, whereas you get a 20-foot chain or a 20-foot wire rope sling, they're heavy, they're cumbersome, they're bulky to move around. Um, flexible. Yeah, they mold themselves to whatever you're wrapping around, whatever you're lifting. So flexibility is by far the most here. You do have to be careful how close you bend them around, though they can be damaged. And that's why we'll talk about some of these other ones also. They're very elastic. They stretch under load. All of them stretch a little bit under load, the wire rope and the synthetic especially. But these are going to stretch more. And you're going to get a better example of that when we get the continuous 
or round sling that they're talking about here. Um, load suspended in synthetic web slings are less likely to twist than those in wire rope or chain. Yeah, that's, that's a true statement also. It's going to be a lot less likely to twist. And I'll explain a little bit more of that when we talk about the wire rope slings. But for all the advantages, and that was the bullet points they listed, there are some disadvantages. This is easier to cut through than a wire rope or a cable or a chain. So a sharp edge is going to cut right through this. Um, also, heat. This will melt. This will get damaged by heat. Those are the two main disadvantages that they talk about. So um, with that... They talked a little bit there about protective pads or something we called softeners. It's something that goes around where we're wrapping this around to keep this from getting damaged. Um, and then on the last paragraph on page four, talks about the red core warning yards. Inside these, if there's a cut on here and you can see the red fibers, the red cores inside there, and there's a picture figure seven showing that, same on any of the synthetic slings. If you see red, you shouldn't be using it. The saying that was used to be used out in industry, see red and you're dead. So the red warning yarns are for that purpose. When you're inspecting these, if you see any of that internal fiber inside there and see any of the red coloring, you should not be using it. So now we're going to talk about the different types of synthetic slings real quick. Like I say, this is the endless continuous round sling. Um, here's the tag. Again, all of that information has to be on there. As you see, the advantage is there's no eyes and it would be looped around something or basketed around something and used to lift it. So when we talk about the types of hitches, we talk about, I'll use this one because it's a long loop easier. Straight vertical lift is this hook goes up to the creek, this goes to the piece of equipment we're lifting, straight vertical lift. Basket hitch. We're basketing this around something and lifting it that way. And then a choker hitch, this goes through there. And those are the three types of hitches that have to be on the sling tag requirements. Um, this is a regular web eye to eye, two eyes on it, synthetic sling. And so this was our rounder continuous. They talk a little bit about web slings that have manufactured ends or uh, what's the wording I'm looking for in there? Um, where they have male and female parts to hook through to do a to do stuff with. So these are different things here, similar to what they're talking about in the book. And the last one was twisted eye, where this one's a straight hanging eye, and when we bring this one down, it's twisted to make it easier to choke stuff with. Is the main reason for that. So the last one that we're going to talk about is this twin path or tattletale sling. Again, here's your tag, and then we're going to have all these pieces here. The reason it's called a tattletale sling, and let me tip it this way, is because these two tattletales here. When this gets stretched, you see the other one here. I'm trying to turn this so you can see both of them. When this gets stretched, these tails will pull back inside there. And once you can not see that these, or you see that these have been moved, this has been stretched to a point of damage and then we no longer use it. So it's given the name a tattletale because it basically tattles on itself when it moves, then it is, has been damaged. The other style of these have where you could shoot a light through. This is not one of them, but they would have a tube like this that goes around there that's open that you would shine a light through with an inspection light. And you, when you see light come out the other end, you know that there's no broken fibers inside there, and that's how that works. These are very popular, especially for heavy lifting. Because if you look at it, it's two basic round slings like this together. So it doubles all the capacity right there, just having two of them instead of one. So those are the different types of synthetic slings and a little bit about what you should be looking for. We're going to do an inspection in the shop on Monday or Tuesday 
of the week of class to inspect all of these different slings. So we'll talk about that some more. So as always, if you have any questions, email me, text me, get a hold of me, and we'll talk about it and see what we can figure out.